Hey people, what's up? Hope y'all are doing well. So today we're going to be talking about Joe Biden and his hardworking elves over at the AFT and what they've been toiling over for the last year. So about a year ago, the ATF announced a proposed rule to determine which random hunks of inert materials are now going to be firearms for the purposes of federal regulation. Many of us have had a dull sense of dread wondering what fresh hell the administration was going to inflict on us. Well, the final version of those rules have been released, and so today we're going to be going over those. So to give a quick clarification, AR uppers are fine. Uh, they won't need to be serial serialized or require a NICS check. On the other hand, it probably isn't looking so good for the 80%. It really isn't clear when a block of material becomes a receiver or a frame, as the ATF was generous, generous enough to give itself lots of discretion to keep us on our toes. I'll run through some of the provisions in the new rule so that we can all sit and be confused and annoyed together. Here we are with all 364 pages of this. I've included the link to the new rule in the description if you want to suffer along with me. For the sake of brevity, I'm just going to hit the highlights here. There are rules for gunsmiths and changes forcing FFLs to keep records until Jesus comes back, but I'm going to stick with the frame and receiver issues. Most of the stuff in here is background or responses to comments. I'm mostly going to focus on the actual rules that are going into the CFR, which start about page 319 if you're playing along at home. But first, a little background. So here we have 18 U.S.C. 922. This is United States Code. It is statute. This is an actual law passed by Congress and signed by the President. This section establishes the requirement for the background checks when purchasing a firearm from a dealer. Here is this word firearm. But what is a firearm? Glad I asked. This is 18 U.S.C. 921. This is U.S.C. again. This is also actual law, not regulation. This defines firearm for this chapter, which is chapter, 40 t chapter 44 under Title 18, and it covers firearms, or firearm crimes. If you see firearm in other areas of the law, it may be defined differently. Here is how firearm is defined. The term firearm means a, any weapon, including a starter gun, which will or is designed to or may readily be converted to expel a projectile by the action of an explosive, the frame or receiver of any such weapon, any firearm muffler or firearm silencer, or any destructive device. Such term does not include an antique firearm. This little part about the frame or receiver of any such weapon is the cause of all this drama. Here, the ATF says there is no statutory definition for frame or receiver. It also lists the old definition uh, for frame and receiver. They found this definition lacking for two reasons. First, there is an argument that many guns don't have a single part that meets the above definition. The ATF says as many as 90% of guns do not have a single part that would meet the above definition. This means no part of the gun would be subject to regulation. In fact, there is at least one case in California where this is messed with an ATF prosecution. Second, they don't like that people are selling 80% receivers and frames, especially the parts kits. Oh, do they hate these parts kits. The goal here is to ruin as much fun as possible, but limited by what they think they can get through a court. For instance, most courts outside the Ninth Circuit won't let them force background checks for Barbie dolls simply because they can be melted down and molded into Glock frames. So, what have our favorite involuntary canine euthanizers cooked up for us? So, let's start with the good news. AR-15 uppers do not need to be serialized. Under the new rules that we'll get to in a second, it sounds like they would, but they are upholding some previous classifications and grandfathering existing designs in. Specifically, the AR-15 is listed here. The lower will remain the serialized part of the gun. This was probably my biggest concern about the ATF fiddling around with these rules. I think they had to bend the practicality on this one. It is unfortunate that maintaining the status quo is a win, but we're going to take the positives when we can. Now on to everything else. Here we have the old regulation defining what a firearm is. This is any weapon including a starter gun, which will or is designed to or may readily be converted to expel a projectile by the action of an explosive the frame or receiver of any such weapon, any firearm, muffler, or silencer, or any destructive device, but the terms shall not include an antique firearm in the case of licensed collector. The term shall mean only curios and relics. And here we have the new definition. 
The new definition wholly contains the old with a couple of bonus sentences highlighted at the end. Specifically, it's covering uh, it, the term shall include a weapon or parts kit that is designed to readily be completed, assembled, restored, or otherwise converted to expel a projectile. So for the most part, they just added parts kit to the definition of firearm. Weapons parts kits like the Paul and Rady buy build shoot kits are now defined as firearms. Effectively, it is a constructive firearm. Whenever you hear the word constructive in a legal context, it usually means make-believe. Something may not be technically true in reality, but we will assume it's true for legal convenience. This is what we have here with these kits. You have an 80% frame, the parts to complete it into a fully functioning firearm, and presumably the intent to do so. Through the powers of law and magic, it is now actually a firearm. Before we move on, I want to draw your attention to this phrase, readily be converted. Readily is such an innocuous word. One of those words that you barely notice in a sense, but it has big implications throughout this. Now we have the new definitions of frames and receivers. The ATF is using frame exclusively for handguns and receiver for everything else. We have this wonderfully opaque phrase, the primary energized component. The frame is the housing for that. Reading that, it could be one of several parts. But we have this aside about the sear or equivalent. And they list some examples that show the frame for handguns being the grip and not the slide. With an exception for the SIG 320, which treats the chassis as the frame. Next, we have receivers, which is defined as the part that houses the component designed to block or seal the breach. This is why AR-15s were specifically grandfathered. In that case, the upper houses the bolt and bolt carrier, which seal the breach. If AR-15s were a new design, the upper would be the serialized part. They list examples of different guns, which are mostly what you would expect. And here we have some examples of frames. We have revolvers holding the hammer. We have hammer-fired semi-automatic pistols, which also holds the hammer. striker fire guns, the SIG 320, bolt guns, and on and on and on. Nothing very surprising here. This is mostly the status quo from what I can see. Next, we have our new rule on 80%. ATF has invented this term, partially complete, disassembled, or non-functional frames and receivers. It is any non-functioning frame or kit that is designed to or may readily be completed, restored, or otherwise converted to function as a frame or receiver. This is incredibly vague, so ATF has some examples in a second to help us out. But first, they mention some things that are not receivers. If it is not any object that is clearly identifiable as an unfinished component of a weapon, and it gives the example of unformed blocks of metal, liquid polymer, and raw materials. Luckily for Lowe's and Home Depot, they won't have to serialize their square tubing as AK-50 receivers. It sounds ridiculous that they specifically needed to exclude these things. However, it came up in the comments. Here, commenters bring up things like the Ghost Gunner, which if you don't know, is a desktop CNC machine that can, build a, can mill a block of metal into a receiver. I think they're advertising them as 0% receivers. Or as ATF says, here converts metal ingots into functional firearms. This is why they have to specifically exclude blocks of metal as receivers. Their definition of kit is so bad that you can reasonably conclude a block of aluminum sold with a CNC machine designed to mill it into a firearm would actually be a firearm in the same way as an 80% receiver but with a jig. But fortunately they have given us some examples to clarify this stuff. We have example one here. It is a no-no. It is a frame or receiver parts kit with a partially complete receiver that is sold, distributed, or possessed with a jig or template. They mentioned this one several times, but in case you ha it hasn't been driven home hard enough yet, no kits. I'm a little surprised there isn't a parenthetical that just says, suck it, Paul and Rady. I do love this line about a person with online instruction and common hand tools may ready readily complete it. If you have an internet connection and a Dremel tool, everything could be a gun. Example two, also a no-no. It is an incomplete receiver with template holes drilled or indexed. Manufacturers are not going to be allowed to tell people wh where to drill or cut because then they don't even need the online instructions, just the hand tools. Example three will be receivers that haven't been destroyed to ATF specifications and those will still be considered receivers. Example four, we finally have a winner is going to be an AR-15 blank that hasn't been indexed to show where to drill or mill and doesn't have a jig or other things to complete it coming with it. Example 5 is going to be a similar thing but for AKs with no indexing or jigs.
Now, some people are looking at these examples, example three and four, and they're predicting that the 80% receivers are going to be fine so long as they don't have jigs and they aren't indexed. And there is a little more in the comments, the response to comments that kind of backs that up a little bit. This is the ATF's response to comments. They say companies that sell or distribute unfinished frame or receiver billets or blanks but not jigs are not required to mark these, so they are not considered frames or, or receivers. Companies that do sell or distribute j jigs with partially complete re frames or receivers do have to serialize them and treat them as firearms. They do change language a little bit here. In the first example, they use unfinished frame, and in the second, they used partially complete. These would seem to be synonyms. But the partially complete frames phrase is lifted straight from the rule as being something that is a frame or and effectively a firearm. They can't use that to describe the first example, so they were using unfinished frame. They could have used unfinished frame for both, but that would seem to make the jig or template the sole relevant factor, which I also don't think they wanted to do. A jig or template is almost certainly going to make it into a frame and a firearm but the absence isn't necessarily going to prevent it from being classified as a frame or partially complete frame. The ATF is giving itself too much discretion here. Let's roll back over to their definition of partially complete frames and receivers. The director may consider jigs, guides, marking materials that are sold, distributed, or possessed with the kit or otherwise made available by the seller or distributor. If you advertise it, as an 80% receiver or provide instructions online, these are going to count against you. This is ridiculous. You can sell the item, but if you acknowledge what it is and market it as such, you start trading into dangerous territory. Heaven forbid you put a diagram on your webpage. The people saying 80% are still going to be allowed to be sold are certainly right to some degree. At one end, you have a block of raw material, and at the other end, you have a functioning receiver there are going to be points in the middle where ATF has to allow the object to be sold. There's going to be some point where they draw the line, even without a jig or a template. Even though we will be able to buy some form of an incomplete frame or receiver, what will be allowed isn't going to be the same. I have not completed any of the 80% kits, but looking at the process for the polymer 80 frame, one step requires cutting out a U to allow room for the barrel. In the pictures I saw, this is recess, so that you can see where to cut. With all the, all the discussion of marking and indexing, I don't think this is going to be allowed. I have confidence that Polymer 80 and other companies will adapt to overcome this, but I am concerned with the amount of discretion ATF is taking here, hanging on this one little word we've seen over and over, readily. They were kind enough to define this for us, so let's take a look. Here we have the definition of readily. It is something that is reasonably efficient, quick, and easy, but not necessarily the most efficient, speediest, or easiest process. For me, this is the most noxious part of the new rule. It has eight ambiguous factors to determine whether an incomplete receiver can readily be converted into a functioning one. No one can read this and confidently design a product to comply with these rules, and that's the point. They don't want to write clear rules that people can understand and comply with because they don't view it as compliance. They view it as people working around the rules. So they want this to be totally at their discretion. They want manufacturers to come to them for approval so they can look at these listed factors, shake their magic eight ball, and decide if the object is something that can be trusted to the peasantry. Here we are back in the comment responses. This is where the ATF throws up its hands and asks, what do you want from us? Specifically, they say that writing a rule that would cover all the designs and configurations of firearms parts would be difficult, if not impossible, and point out that they said blocks of metal are not receivers, kits are receivers, and they even gave us examples. What else could we possibly need from these selfless public servants? Well, clear rules. Once again, they could come up with clear determinations, but they know if they do, people will comply in ways they don't approve of. This idea that we can't explain when something becomes a firearm, but we know it when we see it, specifically so people can't comply to me seems like a due process issue and apparently I wasn't the only one. If something is so vague that you can't reasonably know whether you are violating the law it can be invalidated for that vagueness. The ATF has responded to similar comments saying the courts have been on their side on this one. However a few years ago I think it was 2018 there was an immigration case in front of the Supreme Court and the phrase crime of violence was considered too vague and the law was struck. 
I feel like violence is a more concrete term than readily is, as it is explained here. I think the A in ATF should stand for arbitrary and capricious, but I'll move on. And here we are back at the definition of readily. And that brings me to my second big problem with this. They seem to be using this term specifically to push this process beyond the means of the average person. Ease, expertise, equipment, and feasibility are all factors listed here. And they are all factors where the more accessible the process is to the average person, the more likely that it isn't going to be allowed. This is a recurring theme, as in the examples they gave, saying being able to finish an item with common hand tools is a factor in classifying it as a receiver. Technically, it's still legal for us to make our own guns. They really, really don't want us to. So in summary, where are we at? Well, this wasn't as bad as I anticipated. Maybe the ATF realized the impracticality of trying to make major, change into, major changes to these rules given the number of existing firearms. Or maybe this is a new ATF strategy. Scare people with asinine nonsense and then walk it back a little at the end. You know, not so bad. We're, we're just going to shoot your dog a little bit. You know, just a little bit. Maybe in the leg or something. Maybe only a 22. So you'll be able to buy AR uppers with no problems. 80% are still going to exist in some recognizable form. But oh boy, if it has anything, anything at all, that will assist your peon ass in making it into a functioning firearm frame, Joe Biden is going to come personally come and grope you and your whole family before throwing you in prison. And I didn't go over it, but there's also a section about making the outer tube of the suppressor the frame of the suppressor. That would explain the mass denials of Form 1s for people wanting to roll their own a couple of months ago. But it's like my grandma always said, don't take any wooden nickels and don't buy any Chinese solvent traps online. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm not saying I agree with what the ATF is doing there. But if I'm going to buy a device that's designed to contain explosive gases in close proximity to my face, I'm probably not going with the Chinese knockoff. That's all I got for you guys. Thanks for watching to the end. If you have any comments, suggestions, corrections, drop those down below. I hope you found today's video interesting. I try to give commentary that's sometimes accurate and occasionally even sober. I hope to see you in the next one. Until then, remember, looking all for Supreme Court. Bye. Imagine had the tobacco industry been immune to prostitutes being sued. Come on. What a stupid son of a bitch.